from Beer Cartel here with another live Facebook video, uh, our weekly video that I do on Thursdays. Uh, this week I'll be talking about uh, a bit of news in the industry with regards to a New Zealand brewery that has ceased uh, the, the distribution as well as the new beers. Um, I hope that whatever you guys are up to at the moment, you're having a good week and the week so far has been great and you're looking to lead into the weekend. For me, today is a pretty special day. It's my wedding anniversary, so I wanted to do a big shout out to my wife, Claire. Hope you've had a great day. Um, I look forward to coming home and sharing some beers with you. Unfortunately, I won't have a bunch of flowers, but I will have a box of beers. Some of you might think that's a bit slack, but the reality is over the last few years, I've converted Claire into a craft beer lover. So uh, when we first met, she would uh, not drink any beers. Uh, she was basically a cider and um, Sav Blanc drinker. Uh, and now she is a bit of a fiend for IPAs, hoppy pale ales. Um, she doesn't mi mind dark beers and the occasional West Fletter and Eight, uh, which we enjoyed not too long ago. Um, and the only styles she really, really dislikes are Hefeweizens. So if you're ever buying her a beer, uh, don't buy Hefeweizens, stick to the IPAs and Hoppy Pale Ales. So happy wedding anniversary. I hope uh, you've had a great day. And uh, yeah, I look forward to sharing a few of the beers that we've got here today because we have got a stack that have arrived today or this week. Uh, so last week and the week before, we're a bit light on. Uh, I think we had about half a dozen beers. Uh, this week we've got just over 30 new beers that have arrived from last Friday till today. They are all available online and in store, of course. Uh, so if you are tuning in from different parts of Australia, you can jump online and we will ship those straight to your door. Um, we ship New South Wales ACT, it's $9.99 a box. Uh, and for the rest of Australia, um, even far north Queensland, WA and Tasmanian people, uh, we can ship to you guys for $14.99 a box. Um, so it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cost effective um, and you can mix and match. You can buy as little as a single bottle of any product or a single can right up to cases and whatnot. So um, if you are interested, jump online, beercartel.com.au uh, and we will fix up your orders for you. Um, it's been pretty busy. Started this week on Monday, we put an email out for Oscar Blues. Uh, so Oscar Blues are these couple of cans here and a couple of the other ones on the side there. So Oscar Blues, uh, they were one of the kind of pioneers in craft beer canning in the United States. And the main reason they went with um, a canning line is because it was cheaper than bottling. So cans are a bit of all the rage at the moment. They're our preferred vessel. So if we've got an option between buying from bottles and cans, we we'll always stick to cans because we think they're a better vessel for carrying beers. Uh, they don't break. They don't let light in, uh, reduced ox ox oxygen pickup, um, and uh, we can stack more of them in our fridges, and they chill down a bit quicker too compared to bottles. So that's why they're our preferred uh, preferred vessel for beers. Um, but I'll talk about those beers in a little bit. I first wanted to. It's not. I'm not breaking the news. Uh, I know that has been a couple of posts out there, um, and Australian Brewers News just did a release with regards to Panhead. So Panhead, you may recognise these beers from New Zealand. They're about two and a half years old. I think maybe three years old. Really, really cool um, artwork on their cans. Uh, they're known for Johnny Octane, Red IPA, the Lola Deville. Um, uh, Saison and a couple of the, the other ones that they make in their cans and they've got the quick change um, and uh, a couple others, the white white wall, um, white pale ale as well in bottles. They've actually decided to cease trading or their distribution partner has decided to cease trading here in Australia. Now a bit of history, so back in May I think it was, they were purchased by Lion. So Lion, um, which is Lion Nathan here in Australia and I think in New Zealand it's called Lion Co have um, purchased Panhead. Um, I think that the, the industry kind of information from what was written in the Australian Brews News article written by James Atkinson probably just about an hour ago talks about that there was a, a potential lack of commitment from Lion's End to say that they were going to be in it for the long term with regards to ensuring Panhead distribution um, in Australia. So we have bought some of the remaining stock that was available um, some of it, they were expecting a container that was about to leave um, New Zealand. So that has been cancelled. So there is literally, there was no, no more kind of fresh stock that was about to arrive. The last container arrived in July. Um, but some of the stock that we picked up is got 2017 dates, really, really long. Um, but uh, the Johnny Octane and the Lola 
is short dated to September, about middle of September. Um, they're on special on, our web, on their website, but it may be the last time uh, for a little while um, that, um, that you may be able to pick up some panhead. Um, the exact wording from the team at Line Nathan when they were asked for comment, and again, this is from the Australian Brews News article from today. The Line spokeswoman told Australian Brews News, um, it's always been their intention to ensure that Panhead remains available to Aussie beer lovers. Unfortunately, our Australian distributors have made a decision to cease Panhead distribution effective immediately. So I got the phone call on Tuesday. Uh, by Tuesday afternoon, we had the um, memorandum that had been sent out to all customers. Uh, in the medium term, distribution will be picked up by line and we are currently working through various options to ensure that we keep Panhead available in Australia in the short term. Uh, we'll provide more details as soon as it is available. Now, I always want to take uh, people for their word. Unfortunately, I have seen sometimes when it does get craft beer into a very large portfolio, uh, it can get missed out and all good intentions uh, do unfortunately sometimes fall by the wayside. But I will wait to see what happens with the uh, pan head developments because they make really, really good beers. Apart from having awesome artwork on their cans, the actual product inside the cans and inside the bottles are very, very good. And they do do limited release um, batches every now and again. And because they come from New Zealand, uh, they're probably about the, the second freshest stock you can get. So the Australian stuff is the freshest stuff you can get. New Zealand's about the second freshest stuff you can get um, because it's got the least um, distance to travel from an overseas country. So watch out for the developments on that. If you're keen to try uh, these beers and you haven't done so, again, they're, they are available. Um, but as to what happens with the next uh, chapter with regards to pan ahead and distribution in Australia, not quite sure. The intentions are there to continue it, uh, but I do remember seeing similar things around Emerson when Emerson uh, was bought, bought by Line probably about three or four years ago. Um, it was imported directly by a guy in Melbourne called John Cope Williams. Uh, John Cope uh, then basically had to cease um, importing it because it fell under Lion, uh, and I haven't seen um, Emerson commercially available in Australia since then, um, at least not legitimately. So that's a bit of news about Panhead. You may have heard about it, you may not have. Um, but yeah, keep, keep an eye out. It may be again in the news. And if you want the latest news, I highly recommend Australia Brews News, uh, Australia, Australian Brews News and Crafty Pint are really, really good sources of information. Um, I will just state that uh, the actual purchase of Panhead, and I just went through and, and ticked a few um, boxes in terms of working out who they have kind of purchased over a little while. So uh, about four or five years ago, Little Creatures, uh, White Rabbit, Emerson's, as I mentioned, Panhead just recently, and they are also the owners of Max, James Squires, um, and Kosciuszko Pale. So uh, their portfolio of craft beer at Lion is definitely growing. Uh, and I'm sure you can watch this space even more uh, with regards to news about, um, I guess, more acquisitions that will happen in the future. It's happening in the States at the moment, uh, and it's definitely going to be something that evolves over time in Australia. So that is uh, a bit of news uh, with regards to Panhead, um, the beers this week. So I've got almost all of them on here. I know you can't see them all in frame. Um, and instead of going through every every single one of them, I thought what I'd do is I'd break them down into, I guess, four key categories. Um, stouts or imperial stouts, uh, easier drinking session, uh, lagers, pale ales, um, session IPAs, IPAs, red IPAs, double IPAs, um, and then sour ales or sour beers um, and wild fermented beers. Those four categories are probably some of the more um, popular categories, definitely IPAs from the recent research that we did, um, and pale ales are your two favorite categories that you guys enjoy drinking at home and out and about when you're at breweries and venues and craft beer bars and restaurants and the like. So let's kick it off. I will, I'm just gonna put these out the front. These cans here are the ones from Oscar Blues and then that one is um, from the guys at Blackman's Brewery down uh, in South, uh, no, down in Victoria, sorry. Um, you may recall from a video a little while back, I did their Angry Reg, which was their double IPA that they did as a limited release um, around Gabs, um, and I rated it as high as um, Pirate Life double IPA. So these guys, I haven't had their Ernie Golden um, and their uh, Reginald IPA, but I assume that the quality will definitely be there. Um, so these, uh, this is a um, this is their Yellow Pills um, from Oscar, the Burrito um, Mexican Lager, uh, the Golden Ale from the guys at Blackman's. 
mismatch a session ale. So those guys down at SA. Um, to Atara, they've done a commemorative pale ale. So to Atara, New Zealand brewery, really cool labels. They've got kind of like this embossed uh, lizard thing going on on the neck there, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, the Tropidelic, so this is, again, very, very um, fresh off the boat. This uh, received an email about this probably about a fortnight ago by the time I got the consolidated palette up from Melbourne. Um, it probably arrived to us uh, start of this week. So um, that one there from Eight Wide, again, another sensational brewery. And then a limited release, the Deadhead, uh, Dead Ahead uh, British Golden Ale from the guys at Lord Nelson. So Lord Nelson being the brewery in the rocks, or they've got their small brewery there in the, in the rocks, and then they actually brew off site um, for their bottled product. That's their limited release. If you are a um, beer club subscriber, this will feature in um, the September pack. So that is one of the beers, limited release beer from the guys here at Lord Nelson. Um, and that is their British Golden Ale. So easy drinking beers. Um, so you've got lagers, session ales, pale ales. Um, and so they'd be the ones that if you're wanting to have um, something light, something easy, something refreshing, that would be um, the beers to go to for new beers this week in that kind of category. So the next lot of beers I'll talk about, I'll probably do it just in the order that I would drink them, I suppose. Um, I'd probably go sours next, just for something a bit different. Um, so we've got some from the US, some from Australia, and some from New Zealand. So it's pretty cool. So eight wide I just talked about. This is their Palette Trip Sour IPA. Um, again, I haven't tasted any of these beers because they've just landed, um, but this one is from Eight Wide Sensational Brewery. Um, that's one sour that we've had. This is the Fajoa, uh, Wild Fajoa. This is the 2015 release. We've had the 2014 release before, um, again from Eight Wide. This stuff does not last long. Uh, be a couple bottle limit on this one. Um, and if you are after some, they are online at the moment and in store. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Hop Dog, so Tim down in uh, South Nowra, um, he's released, uh, this is one of his latest creations. Um, so this is the Unicorn Tears, which is a wild barrel fermented um, ale. And then from New Belgium. So New Belgium, we have had some of their stuff before. We've had their Fat Tire and their, um, their Black Lager, um, as well as their uh, Rampant IPA and their Range, Ranger IPA. Um, this is their La Folie. So La Folie is French for the craziness or, or the madness. Um, and this is a sour brown ale. So this is a 2016 La Folie. Um, now, New Belgium, when we have had it in the past, it has been parallel or grey imports. Um, this is now fully uh, legitimate imports. Um, the price has come down quite significantly on these. So if the price kind of put you off in the past, because uh, obviously when we get it grey, it's, uh, it's coming um, through a side channel. Um, these ones here are coming through Square Keg, which is the distribution arm of Stone and Wood. So Stone and Wood have started to put together, or sorry, Stone and Wood's um, side up distribution arm called Square Keg has started to put together a portfolio of really cool beers. And their first acquisition of an international brand is New Belgium out of the States. So keep an eye out for that. We've also got their Fat Tire Ranger in 355 mils. Um, so we used to have that in the 650 mils, but now it's available in the 355s. Um, and yeah, so Fat Tire, Black Lager, um, and the Ranger Air La Folie as well. So there's a couple of sour beers if you are into sours. And again, with some of these, you could put these away because they are not necessarily beers that you have to drink super fresh like you would do um, with, say, um, pale ales or, um, or IPAs that are recommended to kind of drink um, as soon as possible. So the next lot, and this is the lot that I know... Um, a lot of you guys out there will really, really want to get your mitts on um, and uh, and try a few of these. So this is this kind of category is the IPA um, session IPA kind of category where I've, I've bundled all these beers to go, together, um, and I'll just quickly go through them. So I'll just do the session IPAs first. I think there's only two of them from memory. So um, so there's hop slice. Session IPA from Deschutes. So again, that's uh, just fresh off the boat, just got delivered this week, just um, just arrived. So that's Deschutes. 
American Brewery make very, very good things. That's probably one that'll be in the box tonight to take home to Claire um, so that she can enjoy a couple of beers uh, and I can enjoy some as well. This is the Pinner, um, Pinner Throwback IPA. Uh, look, there's uh, Pirate Life have got their Throwback IPA. So if you wanted to, you could do a head-to-head, not only on style, but I guess on naming as well. So that's the Pinner Throwback IPA, and that's from Oscar Blues in the U.S., as I mentioned, one of the very first breweries in the US to start canning in the craft beer kind of category, um, and mainly because it was cheaper for them to buy a canning line than it was for them to buy a bottling line. And in terms of IPAs, let me just grab the ones. That's Imperial Red. It's okay. So the guys are Hop Federation, Rakao, Rakao IPA. So Rakao is a region um, up near Mochuaca, uh, Nelson area. Um, so top of the South Island of New Zealand. Um, so that is their New Zealand version of an IPA. Um, and again, um, so we've had a couple of their beers before. We've had their red IPA and their double IPA. Both have sold very, very well. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if this Rakao IPA sells um, very well as well. Um, so that's one to look out for. Again, from New Zealand and uh, one that you guys see quite a lot of. Epic, so red bottle cap with the white writing. So this is their Amber IPA, it's called Hop Dozer. So another very fresh one, one that's just arrived um, that we got up on a pallet from Melbourne. Um, so that's an Amber IPA. You don't see many Amber IPAs uh, around. I suppose you could just call it a red IPA and you do see quite a lot of red IPAs. So uh, India Amber Ale, Amber IPA, um, I think you, you guys probably get um, get the idea, um, but that was bottled probably within the last uh, month and a half. Um, so that's from Epic in New Zealand as well. And then in terms of IPAs, so we've got two straight up IPAs. So Oscar Blues again, that's the Oscar Blues IPA in a can. Uh, that was pretty well priced um, when, when this arrived. They've actually line priced their pale ale with the IPA, uh, which is not something you see uh, very often. Um, their pale ale, I think, has got slightly higher alcohol content, which is probably why the excise kind of works out about the same as what their IPA is. But normally the IPAs will always be a little bit more because they attract a slightly higher excise from the government uh, because of the higher alcohol content. Um, so pretty good value for money, I think, that one. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, this is the Blackman's. Um, this is their IPA. So we have had their Angry Reg, and this is just their Reg or their Reginald um, IPA. Um, and so they, they classify it as an American West Coast um, IPA. So expect sort of big fruity, passion fruit, grapefruit characteristics from that one. Again, another one I'll be putting in my box to enjoy tonight. And then in the Imperial side, in the Imperial Stakes, we have one from, uh, we've got, sorry, two from Oscar Blues again. So this is from the, uh, the shipments that we got um, started this week on Monday. So that's the Governor which is uh, their Imperial, and then this is the Imperial Red, which is the G Knight. So a lot of this Oscar Blue stuff has gone very, very quickly. The shipment into Australia was actually a bit of a test shipment. Um, so my understanding is there's actually no uh, long-term commitment, so to, say, so to speak, uh, with regards to the Oscar Blue cans uh, and the Oscar Blue beers. Um, they were kind of sent out a bit of a test um, to see how they would be received in the Australian market. A lot of you have bought up, um, even myself, I've taken a, a few of these home. Um, and uh, yeah, the 1050, their Imperial Stout in cans, that basically sold out in less than a day. Uh, we did have very limited stock because of the limited amount that was brought over. Um, but it'd be interesting to see. Um, the response has been good. I certainly hope they continue bringing them in. They're in really, really good uh, packaging format. As I mentioned, it's our preferred format in cans. They've got a cool history where they were one of the first craft breweries in the States to implement canning. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they basically embrace that and they make very, very good beers. So that's a couple from Oscar Blues in kind of the IPA or the Imperial um, IPA categories. And then this one here from Founders. So this just arrived just yesterday. We were hoping that it was supposed to arrive last week, but uh, it didn't. It got held up with logistics. So this is the Founders Redanculus. 
So this is the Imperial Red IPA. Um, and you might remember from last week's video, I took you through a couple of beers from founders. And what they do is they've got a, they call it the backstage uh, release. And it's effectively beers that are from backstage or from their back barrel room um, where they do uh, just one-off kind of brews. Um, and from that, they sometimes decide to take those beers and release them in bottles so more of the world can experience that beer. And this is one of those beers. This is the Imperial Red India Pale Ale. Uh, this is the Redanculus. Again, I haven't tried it. Reviews are pretty good. And because it comes from the um, Backstage series, I think it's number 13. Um, it's here now. There is no kind of commitment as to when they will re-release it, if they ever will. So it's one of those beers, if you're not grabbing it now, uh, you may miss out. Um, and it is a style that is very popular, so I don't imagine that they will be around for very long. Uh, just a bit more than $10 on the bottle, um, but again, a lot of that goes into the excise. This one is 9.5% and 90 IBUs, so 90 international bitterness units. Definitely one to look out for. Definitely one that I'll be taking home uh, and trying either tonight or this weekend. Now, the last lot of beers that I will go through before rounding out the, the video is dark beers because, I don't know, most people just end their nights on dark beers, so I thought I'd end this video on dark beers. Um, some Again, some cool, cool beers. Um, Emelise, De Molin, um, Tuatara and Oscar Blues, again, some coffee, some barrel aged. So if you're looking for the barrel aged stuff, you can't go past Emelise um, De Molin. They're gonna be the, the go-to stuff. There's a, there's a, um, a Port Charlotte or Charlotte um, barrel aged one. One's Brett, uh, let me just have a quick look which one I'm talking about. So this is the Port Charlotte Russian Imperial Stout from Emelise under their white label series. You've got a Brett barrel aged Imperial Stout as well. This is from uh, De Molin. And then from Doctor's Orders, so Doctor's Orders and Big Shed released last year. It's called um, uh, Big Shed Doctor's Orders or, or uh, Big Sh Dr. B Dr. Shed Love, I should say. Um, and this is their 2016 release. It's a Belgian Imperial Yam and Taro Stout. It's got a pretty cool label. Um, so Yam and Taro are kind of um, root plants. Um, so yeah, so they've added them into the brew. Again, this flew off the shelf last year uh, we've got a few cases of it uh, and yeah they've changed it from being in large bottle formats to being in 330 mil bottle formats um, i think 330 in, obviously by the single but you can also get them by the four pack as well as is uh, is what they entered into our system from memory so that's a couple to look out for and then if you're into your coffee and your coffee stouts these are the two for this this week the hot box there's the hot box coffee porter from um, oscar blues Again, in cans, don't let that put you off. Cans are awesome. It's our preferred vessel for, for beers. Um, and uh, yeah, this part of the sec the video, I thought I'd talk about, um, I guess, both of these beers and what they could be used for. Obviously, you can just enjoy them. Um, the guys here at work have had uh, have enjoyed these beers. I haven't tried the hot box just yet. And then Tuatara have released their uh, tiramisu. So this is in conjunctions. So they've used some, um, some, some coffee beans. Um, in the actual brew. Um, but I thought I'd talk about tiramisu and biramisu. Um, so you might remember a guy called Chris Badnick. Uh, he was on uh, MasterChef, what, 2009, something along those lines. I know it was when we were just kind of starting out beer cartel. Um, and he had uh, a bit of involvement with uh, beer masons. And so while he was actually on um, MasterChef, he decided, I think one of the the challenges he did a biramisu instead of a tiramisu so if you're familiar with the tiramisu which is an italian uh, dessert it typically calls for the use of coffee or a couple of cup, cups of coffee or espresso or something along those lines or a coffee liqueur um, and he decided to mix it up and do a biramisu and i had never really thought about it at that that stage um, but these would be perfect beers to kind of do a biramisu so instead of using coffee in the actual recipe uh, it would be about using beer. Um, so yeah, so these are two beers. If you're adventurous and you're wanting to try that out, you could make some biramisu with uh, the stuff from Tuatara, the, the tiramisu for, 
from Tuatara, uh, and you could possibly try to do the same thing at uh, Hotbox Coffee Porter um, from Oscar Blues. So they're the beers for this week. Um, kind of tried to go through them reasonably quickly, but give you a bit of a sense for the different styles and the different uh, breweries that we have had land over the last week. Uh, I'm pretty excited because there's some sensational beers in there. Um, the challenge is always uh, picking which one you're going to have tonight uh, or tomorrow night or over the weekend because there are always new beers landing in store and uh, on the shelves. Um, the other quick call out I wanted to do is don't forget that Father's Day is not too far away so we are getting uh, quite a few orders for Father's Day gifts so if you're looking for something for Father's Day uh, we've got uh, quite a lot of sort of mixed packs the hottest 100 packs are being uh, are proving quite popular so you've got either a 12 pack or a 24 pack that you could uh, get dad for Father's Day we've also got beer subscriptions uh, either monthly or quarterly they're very, very popular, especially if you're watching this video a bit too late and you've left it a bit last minute. Uh, if you're re-watching this video in a couple of weeks' time, you will probably be able to get a beer club subscription, gift certificates, there's plenty of glassware and stuff as well. Um, I'll probably do a post on a couple of good gifting ideas with regards to things you can get dad for Father's Day, which is uh, about a week and a half away. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great end of week and a great weekend. Uh, whatever beers you are enjoying, I hope they're crafty ones. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, happy drinking. Cheers, guys.